Hey guys, welcome to the Couple of Nurses podcast with your hosts, Piotr Findura and myself, Matt Slarchuk. Welcome guys, this is a podcast where we tackle current health news and hot nursing topic one conversation at a time. Guys, thank you for following, listening, whoever's new. Welcome those that are back. Thank you guys. Please comment, share, subscribe. Hit that five star if you guys are on um, Apple. It gives us like rankings and it helps us become bigger and helps more people in the long run. Bigger, better, stronger. Exactly. Kanye West, today, right? Katie. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We listened to what? The Kid Cudi and Eminem song? Just now, yeah. That's pretty solid. But today, guys, I'd like to welcome our beloved friend, Sebastian Matoniak. How's it going, guys? He's a fitness enthusiast and a future daddy. And we've literally known Sebastian probably our whole lives. And he's also a firefighter in the state of Illinois. How's it going, Sebastian? It's going good. It's going really good. When did, we, when did uh, Sebastian leave elementary school, Mark Twain? Was it fifth grade? Uh-huh. Sixth. Right sixth, after sixth, sixth grade. yeah. And we had an interesting like time growing up because we literally had an all all poly school for mm-hmm. like the fir- or a classroom for the first five years. Yeah, we of were our, time. our classroom was so Polish. We had to sing the Polish national anthem. Remember <laughs> every Friday, every Friday, guys. Wasn't low that key. like first grade? Oh, uh, was that first grade? No, dude, it was like from Miss Pavlo- Pavlikovsky and Miss pa- and Pani Gavlak did the same thing. Yeah, so it's third grade. Oh damn! Oh yeah, then who did, I don't remember because I left what like beginning no middle of fifth I left. I left before you, so you left middle of sixth. I left. I finished sixth. You I finished li- sixth. I moved and I literally finished school. Okay, yeah. Then I literally drove all the way from where we live now, which is like forty-five minutes away, uh, on the street all the way to school. Respect, yeah, because I moved. <laughs> I finished sixth grade in Lock in in fucking Lockport, so I moved in like middle of sixth grade. It's wild. Yeah. So we all grew up together, right? Which mm-hmm. was we had a good childhood. I remember playing tackle football sometimes. Uh, and I was scared to get tackled by Sebastian, man. So I know sometimes sissies, I would like, just take the knee. Like, this guy's been big ever since, uh, like, he just has good genes, I feel like. Yeah, dude, I don't know where your genes came, came from, but... but Neither dude. my mother or my father. Mailman? I don't know. Mailman? <laughs> the milkman in Poland? The milkman, bro. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But yeah, dude, like, it's crazy, because we still have, like, a handful of friends that we grew up with, and we still stay in contact for most of it, like, yeah. for most of it. Like, even Luke, Luke, we've known forever. And he's, like, partnered with us to do a couple nurses, you know? Right. Like, it's wild. And it's been, like, almost, like, what, 10 years since we, like, finished high school, guys? And, like, what? Yeah, almost time, 26. Yeah. It's, like, time flies by, man. It's, like, not waiting for nobody. And it's just interesting how, you know, our parents told us of bad times. And we're living in technically bad times. And mm-hmm. people always feel like, hey, shit's just happening technically, right? So, yeah, it's been, it's been crazy. Yeah. It's life. It just keeps going. It is. So, Sebastian, you're a fighter fighter. So, like... How did you, what made you want to become a firefighter? Or how did you even become a firefighter? I mean, it's pretty much what everybody says. Mm -hmm. You've kind of wanted to do it since you saw the first fire truck or the first engine, whatever, ambulance. Um, I didn't know I was going to be a firefighter. I always, I was always into working out the human body. So just went through the process of figuring what I want to do. First, it was like physical therapy. Which, when I learned that it was, like, eight years of school, I said, nah, that's, that's not for me, you know? So I went down to nursing. That That's another bachelor's degree. No, nah, not for me, you know? Didn't try wiping your so, ass, right? <laughs> exactly, <Respect>. yeah. <laughs> so um, I was just kind of looking at, like, ways. I went to, I did, like, I don't know, two classes, half a semester to be a police officer. Went into, like, the the criminal justice side that yeah and then I learned that like firefighters EMTs paramedics you know they work with people so I kind of went to a class I liked it it was about the human body how it works what it does uh, and I just stuck with it it's pretty cool yeah I mean being a firefighter is like a fairly masculine role like if you think of like firefighter nurse you know firefighter usually the dude and nurses usually like the, the woman yeah. you know but yeah it's, it's, a, it's a solid career it's, it's a decent like work schedule like you work with guys with similar interests, you know, because people going to, to become firefighters because you know it's a solid career path because it makes good money, good schedule, and it's like hands on shit, and right. you're actually like benefiting the neighborhood and, and like the world. Right. Right. So, how long of school was it to become a firefighter? So you get uh, semester six months for EMT, a uh, full year of paramedic school, and then you got to find a fire academy to go to and get that. Now, with getting into the fire academy or paramedic school, it's it's competitive. Mm-hmm. So it's like nursing. You got to test into the program, get into the program, and, yeah. you know, if either someone outbids you or 
outscores you in a way, you know. Um, passing score is uh, 70, but they are only taking 18 people, and someone, the 18th person, scores 72, you're not going, even though yeah, you passed, you know. Them, so yeah. it's it's the same thing with testing into a paramedic program. So that's, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the route. So mm-hmm. it's like, what, three years? Mm-hmm. And then testing for jobs it's not like you're applying for a job you're pretty much putting the application in and you're taking a test for a fire department to kind of score you and see where you land and then there's always over 100 kids testing and sometimes they're hiring five sometimes they're just hiring one so is there a physical test involved too or no oh there is Mm -hmm. um that's called the cpat so it's basic pulling dragging um, carrying stuff. There, it's not a lot of weight. You do have a weighted vest on, though, which is about, I think, 20 pounds. So you got to do the stairs for, like, three minutes and then the physical aspect of it. Oh, yeah, there's no physical test for nursing. There's not, man. Just use your use your hips, use your legs for lifting, guys. Yeah. It's, it's all about the <laughs> your lower, lower back. Your lower back. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna have, like, Matt with back pain. Dude, yeah. First day back at the gym, hurt his back. Dude, I remember my first time lifting 20 uh-huh. pounds. <laughs> 20 pounds. I can't even lift 20 pounds yet. <laughs> yeah, man. Don't put too much weight on the squat, right? Yeah, doctor. Doctor, um, damn, what the hell's my doctor's name? What's my doctor's name? He's actually he's actually filling in for my doctor. Doctor, I don't know his fucking name. I can't forget. I forgot my doctor's name. But if he's listening, dude, I'm not lifting anything, doc. I swear, I promise. <laughs> Matt's lifting it for me. He's here every day when I wake up, helps me to the bathroom, helps me back to bed, puts my pants on for me and everything. <laughs> yeah, Peter, Peter's been good, man. He's been progressing. His stitches are healing. Mm-hmm. So, like, Sebastian, I know it's like, a, you know, you finished all this and you finally landed the job. Is it everything that you've always wanted? Like, how is, like, how is it being a firefighter? Like, are you fighting as much fires as you'd like to? Like, what are your tasks? I just want to, like, dig into, like, your daily yeah, setup. Yeah, like, like a weekend. Like a week at the firehouse. A week at the firehouse. So Story that's, time. Yeah. So that's anywhere three days. Depending on the work schedule, work schedule is twenty four on, forty eight off. Um, was it everything I wanted? Well, I never knew what they did, so I can't really tell you. I never had any family member in the fire service or anything like that, so I can't tell you is it everything that I wanted or not wanted. Uh, the job's going good, you know. Um, a day at the firehouse, you you start your morning check, so you walk in, you clock into work, you go to the rig, you put your you know gear by it. And then you just have a checklist of what you got to check, what you got to do. So, you know, checking that the ambulance or the engine or any other piece of apparatus runs, making sure that you can get out the door when the emergency is called, checking the oil, transmission fluid, just the down and dirty stuff. Um, After that, that runs around anywhere from, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what the check of the day is. And then making sure that none of our drugs are expired, making sure that our oxygen tanks are filled, that type of stuff. Um, After that, we have like a little sit down, talk what the day gonna look like. Um, With the heat index now and everything, we try to get our training done before noon so we can not be in the heat and exhaust ourselves. Uh, So it could be hands-on training or it can be book training. I mean, it's every day is different. Uh, that's probably what I love about the job the most. It's you never have the same day. You might have the same patience, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be the it's not going to be the same thing, you know. Um, after that, we eat lunch. We have about thirty minutes to ourselves to kind of sit down and let the food digest, if you want to call it. And then it's back to you know anything that you see in the firehouse that's either dirty, wash it, fix it, whatever, you know. Um, making sure that everything runs again or if there's any tools that need to be cleaned up, just doing that. We do have um, online training too, if you want to call it. So making sure that you're up to date on that. It's kind of just more scheduling your own time at your job to do what you have to do type of thing. Yeah, so it's like our, like our CEs at work. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So like how often, do you, how often do, you, do you like see a fire? Is it like once a week, like once per, per shift? Oh, not even close. No. The last fire we had. I'm sure it ranges different, like, depends oh, yeah. on what location it is. Depending on what, what location you work at. Like, you watch the news, Chicago has a fire maybe every day, every other day. So, uh, last fire I saw was about 
I would say a month and a half ago, maybe. But yeah. before that, it was a good seven months. So it all it all ranges. I mean, the job is 80% EMS, or if you want to say 90% EMS. Um, you have your car accidents and that stuff, but it's it's not like you're thinking you're going to go cut up a car or, mm-hmm. you know, put the fire out on the car or you get called for a fire in a house and it's, you know, the your oven caught on fire or something. It's not like the house is burning. We all get happy and giddy when it comes in like that, but you just got to look at the big picture, you know? So what are like your like most frequent like calls? Cause I, you know, like in nursing, we always have like funny stories of, you know, this confused patient try to do this or she thinks she's there, or, you know, little funny stories. Like what are like your frequent calls or you guys just kind of like drive back in the engine and just kind of like crack up or something? Our most frequent calls, uh, just have your patients that fall in or, you know, your regular uh, sick patient or you guys work with, you know, COPD and CHF. I mean, we have have those patients too, you know, so it's not like, it's not the same, but it's not different. It's kind of like in the middle. You guys have that too, but with some nurses, like when we go pull up to the hospital, they'll... ER nurses, they'll be like, why didn't you do that or this or, you know, it's, um, so it's different. You're a doctor on wheels, kind of how I look at it. You have to, I don't want to say faster or quicker, but you got to be on your toes at all times. Whereas if you're doing CPR in a room, you have 12 nurses or 10 nurses with you, you know, you have more hands. Well, we have four guys, so that's eight hands. We don't, you know, we don't have a lot. So we kind of have to be on our toes and making sure that we give the best care that we can possibly can. Now with the funny calls, it was about two months ago, hand, my right hand up, we saved a cat from a tree. Oh, nice. <laughs> like never thought in a million years that I'd be, well, I didn't save guys. it. It was the, the other, the other, um, the other guys were just, you know, relaxing, just um, looking through some equipment, and we get a call for a kitten stuck in the tree. We're like, are you serious right now? A cat in a tree? Like, yeah. What? You know, so um, unfortunately, our tallest ladder couldn't reach it, so we had to bring out the truck that has the 110 five foot ladder on it. Oh, damn. So they had to put that up. So, yeah. Uh, that that one was probably like a good a, a good joke for a little bit to the guys being like oh you know heroes <laughs> did it make it on newspaper no <laughs> damn kind of glad <laughs> well it's, well glad. I made it to a couple nurses so it's even better yeah um, so I was gonna ask so in your firehouse you have the fire truck and is also an ambulance or is the ambulance a different different kind of building so we have an engine and an ambulance um, at two stations and then we have a truck and an ambulance at another so it's however the you know the chiefs and want to run the calls or do their however they want the station to run kind of how it goes okay and then do you guys is everybody like certified the same in your firehouse like you guys take turns playing different roles or is always one person driving a truck always the same people in the ambulance and always the same people in, in the fire truck and it's always the same person holding the hose if there's a fire. So do you guys, like, do we just change? have, uh, I want to say protocols or each shift likes to do their own thing, their different ways. So we have, like, if we have a fire, the paramedic will be on the hose line. You know what I mean? We still bring the ambulance, obviously, to the scene just in case there is a patient that either inhaled smoke or something. Um, but we pretty much have the same roles, or depending on your lieutenant or battalion chief, how he wants to set the day up, you know, he'll he'll kind of give you the rundown of, hey, you're driving today and you're the PIC today. So it all depends. Have you ever driven, driven the fire truck? I actually drive the engine right now. Oh, yeah. do you really? Yeah. Bounce oh, man. gosh, dude. <laughs> I wish I could drive it. Mm. Did you drive it today? 
Do you I was not at work today. Oh, that, dude, that'd be so funny. You just pulls up with a fire truck. I know. Hey, it's supposed to be a slow day today. <laughs> they're like, have you ever driven a fire truck? Oh, never mind. I was going to ask if you ever driven a fire truck for non fire purposes. Like for On fun. shift, no, but others have. Are you talking like, about joyriding? Yeah, joy like, Have you ever joyriding no, the fire truck? No, no. Okay. <laughs> but dropping a kid off at a school, yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay, that's cool, man. I'm kind of wondering, so like in nursing, like there's something called that nurses eat their young. And for some reason, the older nurses always prey on the younger ones that are coming on. Does it happen in the firehouse where the older men in the firefighting, you know, engine prey on the, the young guys? No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, they want them to learn and kind of learn quick because okay. there's so much on the job, you know, and it's just like with nursing, there's always new things coming out and the doctors are always telling you different stuff to yeah. do. Um, there's always new ways to learn. So we just kind of, they kind of want us to retain really quickly. Um, but it all comes with time, like, you got to know how the other person will react to your jokes True. and your pranks. And if they're not okay with it, then obviously we kind of squash it right there and then. But, like, the guys that I work with, like, they're always pulling pranks on me and kind of just going back and forth with it. So Just like you said, it's a very masculine mm -hmm. role, right? So they, I mean, we, they we kind of mess around a lot. We do have female firefighters. We have th three. Okay. Yeah. Right. So four. Four, sorry. Four. four. So, yeah, but... They just were one of the girls and they're one of the guys, you know? Mm -hmm. It kind of goes both ways. That's like, awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Like, it works out because, like, for, for me and Matt, like, we work in, like, a female-dominant career. And we, like, I, like, I'm not sure how you've been, like, in where you worked prior to travel nursing and how it is now, but, like, you build a relationship and you just mess with each other sometimes. Hell yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't really, it's not so much that I, like, eat my young or, like, we eat our young. It's more like we kind of mess with them. Hell yeah. Like, you know, like, we just play a little, little prank. We just we just say stupid shit like, hey, there's, like, water leaking in your patient's room and it's water over. And they, they run out of the room and go check it out and there's nothing there. Like, like those kind of things. Nothing, like, like crazy. We don't change. Like, it'd be crazy if someone had changed someone's drip. Like, that, that'd be wild, dude. Yeah, that's a bad that, That's, prank, that's bad. At, that's not even a prank. That's, like, a fucking liability. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That <laughs> that's if someone's yeah. losing their license. That's some shit, yeah. yeah. I'd be, if somebody that's me, I'd be fucking pissed. But, yeah, it's, it's crazy how just, you just... You thought of the fuck idea. Yeah. I, and I, I never did it. I'm not going to do it, but fuck it. That'll be some shit. Yeah, the worst part is, like, if you mess up and someone actually makes, like, you don't mess up bad, but you know you messed up, like, mm -hmm. at a certain little little detail and they make fun of you, I think that's kind of what, like, is, like, the trigger. Like, yeah. all right, dude, like, you can't pull a different prank. You got to, like, you know you feel bad already for it because you know you messed up. Let me tell you, this one time, I we tried multiple times to straight cat this lady, and we could not get her, so... We decided to get a, a smaller French uh, stray cat kit. So I brought a peas one for a lady. And you know how women's, like, the urethra's like a decent, decent in length. So this peas catheter, it probably was an infant catheter, to oh, be honest. Man. This, this peas catheter was like, was like, like four inches. <laughs> Jeez. It's like four Did inches. Did you guys pull it off with a peas catheter? Uh, no, it didn't work. I inserted it, but it's not long enough, dude. Uh -huh. So that's like the running joke. Like, remember when, when Peter brought that peas catheter to trick that, that lady, dude? <laughs> what was he thinking that's going to fit? Dude, that's a running joke, dude, for the past, like, two years. Dude. It, it keeps going. Yeah. And they, that's that's what they'll remember, you I know? know. It's, yeah. it's not it's not the, the other mess up, you know? It's the small little one mm -hmm. that you're like, all right, like, if I would have read the damn paper, I would have <laughs> known, you know? It's, it's that one. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you might do 30, 20 CPRs in a week or two weeks, let's, you know, say, and you have five saves out of it, but they'll remember your Pete's catheter. They won't remember those CPR <laughs> saves. True, that. that's true, man. That's so funny, though. But, dude, like, you know, I actually don't mind this dumb shit happening because it's always something to like, remember and something to look back at and laugh at because it's a good time. Because when I bust out that, that Pete's catheter... Like, I, I looked at one of my coworkers, they looked at me, and they just started fucking laughing. Damn. And I was like, wow, I might as well just try it, knowing for a fact it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because it's going to reach the bladder. But they just let you do they it. They let me do it, yeah. Just, hey, just you, know what you're gonna, you know what you're going to do when you go and get another catheter, though? Dude, I'm not going to get another catheter. I'm having somebody else straight cat my ladies now. Damn. Managers. <laughs> they're gonna Managers. Read the, you're going to read the label. They read, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put urology on console. Can, <laughs> can I straight cat? Please insert a coup day. <laughs> You know what's crazy? Speaking of like straight cathing, I actually had a pretty traumatic experience on the med surge floor. And it was like when I was like a new grad, I, I couldn't straight cath this lady. So I brought help the charge nurse. And it was like three of us there. 
and they're like holding your legs and stuff. And you know what she had? Vulvalis cancer. So oh. it was like vaginal cancer. And it was just like, it was just so hard to do it. I felt so bad for the lady. Yeah. Jeez. It's much when you can't Traumatic, get like, man. when you've tried like two or three times to get a straight cat, like you tried twice, somebody else tried the third time, you don't get it. That's fucking uncomfortable, dude. Yeah, especially. Because when I was in a hospital and they said, yeah, you got to pee within another three hours or you're going to straight cat, dude, I was fucking, how'd, how'd you relax, how'd you relax that bladder, man? Dude, I, I don't know, dude, mentally, man, turn my, my, um, parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system on, right? Because it would turn on, right? Person with the nervous right. system relaxes right. your bladder right. so you're able to pee. Yeah, turn that motherfucker around and pee the fucking within half an hour, dude. As soon as they someone said straight, I already knew what the fuck they're referring to. They yeah. didn't gotta finish the sentence, dude. Pee, did pee, they, did pee. they know you were a nurse at the time? Yeah, yeah. As soon as they said you gotta pee, I already fucking knew the last of that sentence, yeah. dude. Peter started. Peter right away went over to the water fountain, put it on or the water the sink, and he started playing with the water like dude. this, like in a wavy motion, just to kind of pee. Peter pee, <laughs> Peter pee. Yeah, I was like, I was so in, so badly. I feared getting struck out so bad where I took my PCA pump, lowered the side rail, walked to the bathroom, un- unclicked myself from all the fucking monitors, walked to the bathroom, fucking peed, dude. I didn't even have fucking standing privileges yet. Wow. <laughs> How are the hospitals there? No, I'm joking. I actually peed in bed for the first time. That was fucking comfortable, dude. You peed in bed? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't pee the bed, but I peed in bed. I used a urinal, the in, urinal? in bed, yeah. Did the nurse hold it for you? No, I held it myself. I'm a man, dude. I'm not going to... I'm a man. I, my hands were... My bowels didn't work. My hands were working fine. I didn't have hand removal surgery. I had a bowel, yeah. a bowel resection. But there's, yeah. there's those creepy ass men that like oh, yeah. want the nurse to do it. So then they tell me about it. And then I walk in there with the man. I'm like, hey, bro, I'm going to hold your freaking urinal for you. Right away, these hands start working. I got it myself. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, that's true. How are the hospitals there? Arizona hospital or Illinois hospital? Which one do you choose? I was in Arizona where I got my bowel resection. I went to three hospitals, actually. All right, but w- mm. which Arizona's if you were to choose to stay for two weeks? I've never been to any hospitals. First time I was half hospitalized. Oh. So yeah. I have no idea, dude. Yeah. So I have... Well, you none, work in dude. one, don't you? I do work in one. So which one would you rather be in? Uh, probably Christ. No, actually, no. I don't know if I would know. I, I mean, no, I would not. Here's no, I would not go to the ER in my own hospital. <laughs> not think about it. No, because they're going to know everything. You're gonna, they're going to know... Everything about yeah. you, your whole, your whole health history that, you know, maybe I happen to run into some marijuana smoke, guess what, drug test is positive. Now people are thinking, you know, I, I smoke pot and shit or like, you know, things like that. They're going to know your dick size. They're going to know everything about you, dude. Uh-huh. You know, it's <laughs> fucking wild. Peter's a little bit shy here with the, yeah. with the bladder here. <laughs> Qu- so question, Seb. So like, I, I know you're like a lifelong diabetic type one, actually. And for those that don't know, that's the one that's irreversible technically because <laughs> the pancreas doesn't produce any insulin. Not that you're insulin resistant. Like, how, how has it been growing up? Was it like a struggle as a kid? So it happened 2011. Um, I remember watching the Super Bowl. It was Packers and Steelers. Unfortunately, Packers won. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't a happy so, moment. They was already shady to begin with, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like, you knew who was playing, and you're like, all right, damn it. <laughs> um, so what was I, sh- sophomore in high school? I think. Yeah, so, I mean, was it a struggle? I You could say so because you can't really eat what you want. Like, you got to watch what you're eating and kind of, I mean, people are like, you can't have sugar. Yeah, thanks for being my doctor. I don't pay <laughs> you, but sure, whatever. Cool, I can't eat sugar. How come every carb turns into glucose, which is sure. sugar? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we, as people, we live off of carbs unless, you know, you don't, eat any or you don't eat a lot of them you know um the 30 carbs in a banana like that's all sugar especially a polish diet dude you know right potatoes dude. gołąbki fucking pierogi yeah, like w- mm. yeah exactly <laughs> apple strudel cake like your grandma's already trying to take me out <laughs> <laughs> my grandma's especially coming over okay here's a piece of pastry dude yeah <laughs> That's, my, that's exactly what my grandma just said. She brought over some um, apple cake. Extra powdered sugar on top. Um, yeah, you know. Um, but I feel bad for the, like the little kids that get diagnosed with diabetes. You know, you have little Timmy and Johnny over there. Timmy wants ice cream and Johnny has like a yogurt bar or, you know, something with sugar free. It, it doesn't taste the same. Like mm-hmm. this guy has a Kit Kat and, I, you know, I can't have one, you know. So, but... Getting it at an older age, you kind of understand more like, all right, I got to have a little bit, not a lot, which, I mean, I'd be lying if I say that I don't Mm. eat sweets or, you know, whatever. I'll have my 
like a whole Reese's bar or something, but you gotta pump up more insulin, right? <laughs> yeah, more units. More units. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's crazy because like your whole life you've been like pretty fucking fit. I'm pretty sure you had a six pack in like seventh grade, dude. I'm not, mm, I'm not mistaken. Dude. I don't even have one now. Okay, well, I saw the picture from you at the beach. You, no, no homo, but but you you had you had, you had better abs than me and that combined, but. Like, you've always been, like, like well, muscular. Pete, you don't have any right now because of your bowel restriction, so... Yeah, I don't have anything. I don't even have any... I don't even have abdominal muscles anymore, I feel like. I feel like it just, You like, can't even work them out. You got to talk to your doctor about exactly, that. Exactly, doc. Dude, two months? No, dude. Make it, like, th- you, two more weeks, yeah. man. You, you <laughs> help me, doc. Help me. You're going to get a hernia. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get a hernia. But, yeah, so, yeah, like, I've always seen you as, as like, fit. Like, when we play football when we were younger, like, you, you, looked, you looked fit, and it, it's crazy... Like how that happens, like you know, yes, yeah. diabetes don't necessarily mean you're not healthy or anything like that. Because I always, we, you've always been a healthy individual, you've always been fucking muscular yeah. and shit like Most that. It's it. just the genes you've been dealt with, you know, pretty much. I mean, you probably see it at hospitals, I know I have seen it. You know, um, you ask a patient, What do you have? High blood pressure, high cholesterol, like okay, and then you have a fit guy that has type 1 diabetes, mm-hmm. you know, it's like what the hell did I do wrong? And this guy's eating Big Macs and Whoppers and whatever he wants, and yeah. he doesn't even have that. You know, he probably at the end of, you know, where wherever it takes him, like there might be some clogs or whatnot, mm-hmm. but diabetes is a serious thing. It's not It's not fun, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's a lot. My sister has that too, and like like I've seen, seen her first hell like that way, and I've seen it in the hospital too. But, but yeah, it's like... It's life changing. Like you gotta take in so what four times a day, depending on how many times I eat mm-hmm. and how much it carbs it has. Yeah, and then you take Landis at night, right? Like, uh, I don't. You don't. No, I have the pump, so it kind of. Oh, okay. It uses the fast acting insulin as a basal. So you have the pump on you right now. Yeah. So is it like? Do you have the needle in your like your thigh? It's just a small little, um, like an IV catheter. Um, it sits right under your skin and the fat. So where, where is it on your body right now? Right now, it's in my left thigh. Left thigh. And do you have another one that uh, delivers the, um, the uh, glucose? So the pump delivers the glucose. Okay, so yeah. the pump's on the thigh. Yeah. So how do you check what sugar you have? Is it an app? I actually have an app on my phone. That's cool. Mm. So, so it checks your sugar and it gives you uh, insulin? So they're not compatible. Glute, they don't speak to each other. I had one that spoke to my pump. Um, it just didn't work out. It wasn't really working for me, so I went with a different one. Um, so this one just kind of connects with your phone, and you have, I mean, fuck, everybody has their phones on them these yeah. days. Like, you can't, I can't walk to the gas station without yelling, you know, someone call 911 or something, because everybody has a phone on them, so it doesn't right. even matter. So you just kind of, you know, you open my screen up and it'll tell you my blood sugar. So that's pretty much it. And then you have a, you have a separate pump that delivers your insulin? Yeah. Okay, for sure. Yeah, because my sister has the continuous uh, blood sugar monitoring, mm-hmm. but she gives her insulin with the pen. With the pen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's like, so if I was, if I had to pick one, I'd probably choose the one that monitors your, your blood sugar because then you're gonna keep poking yourself. Right. You know, right. And, then, and then say, like, you know, you're feeling low, like instead of poking yourself and checking it, you just, Check the check it on your phone. Check it on your phone. Yeah, yep. and tells you like, hey, you're low. And then you just you know eat something, or if you're high, then you just give yourself insulin. How sure. how has it affected your role as like a firefighter, like um, having diabetes? So I mean, you're definitely more cautious. Like I always have something on me at all times, whether it's you know a can of pop, some Gatorade, uh, something to eat, um, some elk meat, <laughs> protein, right? <laughs> um, so with like, if you know the days, like the last couple of days has been what, plus 90 where we're at. Yeah. So um, just working outside, sweating, my sugar drops. I mean, you're, you're sweating. Everything kind of changes with your body when you do that. So I know that in 30 minutes, you know, with my phone, my sugar is going to be dropping. So I just go take a swig of Gatorade and get back to work and then just kind of go back and forth with that, you know. So you got to be cautious just with the work because you don't want to be putting an IV in a patient and you start shaking and you're like, uh, I can't do this right now, you know? So Have you ever had any of those kind of calls? With? Like diabetes and, oh, shit, I can't do something because 
you totally forgot to eat something and so, you felt like I you mean, had hypoglycemia. I usually, when we eat, like lunch or dinner, I'll eat and then give myself some sugar. I mean, sugar, duh, yeah, I'm eating. <laughs> but insulin, um, so I'll eat first. So by the time, you know, we're finished with eating and whatnot, sit at the table and talk. It's 30 minutes, so by then my sugar is high. I mean, it's not always going to be steady due to the fact that if we're eating and we catch a call, you know, I got to go. So I, I can't just tell them to wait. I'm going to give myself right. units, you know. But I did have where um, I gave myself insulin first one time, and then as I'm putting my food on the plate, we caught a call, and I was like, oh, shit, you know, like, this is going to kind of suck. But I had pop in the rig. So instead of eating, I drank that. And then unfortunately, I kind of didn't have any dinner mm. because I already so injected that- myself. And then I drank all the sugar that I needed to drink. And I didn't want to double dose myself and eat. So you just, just went along with them. So, you know, I had like a side salad and just kind of, well, whatever the day brings, it brings, you know? Yeah. So is there, like, a specific diet that you follow? Like, what do you usually eat? Do you follow, like, like a typical, like a mainstream keto diet or, like, a paleo diet or any kind no, of... No, I'm not, specific? I'm not, I mean, I'm not super strict with my diet, but I'm not, I don't follow anything and everything, you know? Like, my doctor tells me, yeah, you could have a scoop of ice cream. Like, hell yeah, I'm yeah. going to enjoy that scoop of ice cream, I, you know? Like, I'm not going to kind of close myself away from the world like there's someone comes up with a good ass chocolate cake i'm gonna go try that good chocolate cake i don't care you know like so i mean i got i had i got married recently and we had nothing bun cakes you better believe i had nothing bun (laughs) cakes you know like yeah so you've yeah so you've like a pretty good well like you've a pretty well balanced diet for the most part like yeah you you eat like anybody else eats if you want to snack and snack but like by how anybody else eats i mean like probably how me and Matt eat where we eat healthy for the most part but then we also enjoy something sweet right. every once in a while it's not like we smash you know cheeseburgers and I like, mean every you know, doctor's gonna tell you no don't eat that because mm-hmm. it's bad for you or they're gonna mm-hmm. tell you not to drink because it's bad for you like do I drink yeah mm-hmm. like I do is there carbs in beer yes there mm-hmm. is I just watch how many beers I drink and count my carbs so if a beer has 12 carbs per can and I have six beers do the math mm-hmm. I mean it's not you know, it's not that hard. Um, for other people, it might be hard because their insulin ratio and their carb ratio mm-hmm. might be off. So if it's too high, they'll drop low. If it's too low, then they'll be high. You, you know what I mean? So that comes with time and the calculations that the doctors do and the dietitians. So, like, my body's changing constantly. If I gain weight, they're going to change my numbers. If I lose weight, they're going to change my numbers. It's... Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. There's there's no like one set diabetic diet diet you could say. There's you know how in hospital have a diabetic diet yeah. that's not really geared towards anybody. That's that's like broad. So right. like if you want a strict diet, mm-hmm. do a liquid diet. Have fun. Tell yeah. me how that goes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So like each each every diabetic gets like a diet plan geared towards them, depending on how their insulin levels. Because right. just because you might be type one diabetic and somebody else might be, you might have different insulin levels in your body if you even have any insulin right. in your body, you know. So you got to eat differently. What about you, like, your workouts? Like, do you guys work out at a firehouse? Do you work out at home? Do you go to the gym periodically? I, w- I work out at the firehouse, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's it's not a gym workout, but you, we have enough where you could kind of figure stuff out. You know, we have a bench bar. We have dumbbells. We have one Smith machine and a couple of cardio equipment. It's not the machines that you have at a gym, so it's not... Um, you'll get your workout in for sure. Just you got to kind of work with it so i have a question like um heart attacks account for a lot of like work heart like health related um workers how, how do i say a it? lot of firefighters and medical professionals or just fire have right? heart attacks but like among like in work so 45 percent of like all heart attacks at work in a way are related to firefighters and do you see that amongst like firefighters that you know family that they have heart disease or like struggle with any kind of you know, core morbidities because of, like, the exposure to, like, intense heat, fires, monoxide poisoning, and things like that? I mean, I think that comes with stress. Personally, do I know anybody at my job that passed on call or on a fire or at work or off work? I don't. Um, but you 
on the news, you'll definitely see, you yeah. know, or social media. People post about that all the time. Like, you know, he passed from a heart attack, you know, got to the call and had chest pain. I think it actually happened. I don't know what state, but I think something happened about a month ago mm-hmm. or a little bit more where someone got to a call and he had chest pain and he, like, couldn't couldn't go. Yeah. You know, and he said that he had chest pain, so they checked him out on a 12 lead cardiac monitor, and they were like, "Yeah, man, you, like you got to go to the hospital." Yeah. And you me- so. you mentioned stress. Like, do you feel like firefighting is like high stress, where you know you, you could get a lot of core morbidities due to firefighting? Is it stressful? Oh yeah. It you know you you could get stressed. Like Peter said, you can't you can't get a catheter that stresses you out. Like mm-hmm. you went to school for it. Like. I mean, I'm sure you, the first time you were doing it, you didn't get all of them, but you're kind of more proficient at it now and it kind of goes with the flow. But if you can't get it, you're like, dude, I've been a nurse for, you know, two plus, three plus years, five plus years. I, you have bad days. Now, like I said, we, you kind of being on the job and, you know, people looking at you and people recording all the time now, like you got to think on your feet, think quick. If it's an adult or a pediatric, like depending on the situation, yeah, it gets stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Since you're a pretty strong individual <laughs> and you're also diabetic, have you ever used insulin to um, grow your muscles? Because me and Matt did a little bit of research and found out that you could manipulate your levels of glucose and insulin in your body to bring in more muscle mass. Why is that though? Why? Well, let me tell you why. We did some research. So, like, basically what we found out, and if you want, you can use this, but, I mean, at least let me catch up. I I don't want to sound cocky. I probably know what you're reading or why Mm -hmm. it happens. Obviously, I have it, so I had to do my own research. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, like, basically what I found out is, on one study that we looked at is the way insulin actually makes muscles bigger is because it increases protein synthesis. Okay. And the way the research that I looked at, it was insulin plus amino acids. So you had to have insulin in your in your bloodstream and also amino acids, and that increased protein synthesis. So it made it because we all know when we work out, after we work out, you have protein synthesis going on for a few hours. Mm-hmm. So what they're saying is, if you administer insulin after your workout, during when your body's natural in protein synthesis, and you also take amino acids, that's gonna um, super inflate your yeah. protein synthesis. So right. you're essentially you gain more muscle within that time that you're already growing. You, you grow more. That's how it so works. So if you don't have that insulin, that won't work? Well, no matter. So after, after you work out, you go into protein synthesis. So your muscle growth happens after you work out. Right. That's when, it, that's when research shows that protein synthesis is highest after you work out. So it's already high after you work out. You throw an insulin amino acid, that's going to make it even higher. So you're probably going to see that there's even going to be more probably see this is going on. So more muscle growth. And not only that, but it increases energy and stamina mm. and actually helps with like glycogen formation. Right. So you're technically just being a freaking anabolic beast in a way mm. and it prevents muscle breakdown. So you could gain a lot of muscle as I think it's in the, that's what people, that's what muscle builders use, right? Yeah. So we actually found a website that goes over the protocol for this. <laughs> and there's a few websites that we looked at and they both say the same thing. So if you guys want to, Use uh, insulin for like, you know, for steroids. It sounds like a liability, Pete. We should probably stop right here. So don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. You guys didn't hear from us. You guys heard it from bodybuilding.com yeah. or GNC. <laughs> we'll give them done credit and liability. But basically, if you want to use this as, a, as like a performance enhancer or a steroid, what you could do is administer Novolog or Humalog right after your workout. Uh, because Novolog and Humalog peak like, what, 30 to 60 minutes? Oh, no, no, it's quick acting. So it's, it's like 15, acting. so 15, 15 to 30, yeah. 15 to 30. And then after your workout with a meal, and so if you use Novolog and Humalog, you can do this up to two times a day. Yeah. And then if you really want to, you know, get stronger and really build some, some more muscle, you could even use Lantis at night or Lantis throughout the day. Slow acting. Yep. Slow, which is slow acting, which is what's like six to 12 hours or something like that. Don't call yep. me that, but I think it's like, like that. So you could actually, what they're it, saying is you could actually lose that and... And then you'll get a high ten protein synthesis after your workout because you're administering yourself insulin and you're eating proteins, which are amino acids. And then also you're increasing your protein synthesis because you're also using Lantus. So that's like your basal and metabolic rates, you know, which is wild. So if you want to be in the show notes, guys, but 
as you'll probably will put that in the show notes. But <laughs> you know, if you guys want, you could hit up Matt at Matt's Mindset at Instagram, and he could tell you about it. Because she's gonna do it. You can just Google it. I mean, oh, you can Google it. Not Matt's not gonna do it. I'm just you, I'm, here, I'm, here sure, I'm sure there's bodybuilders out there that have YouTubed it and oh yeah, talk about it. Yeah. And I mean, um, but yeah, don't try it at home. I mean, I don't. It's very dangerous. You fucking die. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Insulin yeah. is probably one of the most. Um, mm-hmm. Well, there's a reason why there's two nurses that, like, check it and verify it. And sometimes you have to sign in with a computer to verify the dose in the hospital. So you know that it's, like, could kill somebody, man, giving too much. And you look, look in the hospitals when we can't figure out why they they have, like, stroke-like symptoms. They're just hypoglycemic, man. Like, And that's why I recommend not trying it out. Because yeah. if you don't know what that feels like, you won't know what's going on. You might say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sweating. I'm tired. You know, I'm shaking. Maybe I just got to go to bed. Maybe my heart rate's up. Yeah. Go take a nap. You, you, you'll you you'll wake up dead. Yeah, you never fuck wake up. But I forgot what I was going to say, dude. I fell off my train of thought. It was something about insulin. I even had a patient once that, like, was, like, hypoglycemic. It was, like, my first time giving D50 in a syringe. Mm-hmm. And I gave him, you know, uh, 12.5 grams. Yeah. And, like, you, like, slam it in. Like, two minutes later, this person just wakes up, wakes up and looks around, doesn't know what's going on. Oh, and you it's lose, crazy. You lose your, like, you lose your mind. You mind. can't, you don't remember anything. Mm-hmm. But it's crazy. The person just wakes up. It's like, oh, hey, you know. And I, so the way bodybuilders and, like, people that use performance-enhancing drugs die with insulin is because they're used to seeing, like, you know how we have one unit of insulin? It's so small. Right. So these people give themselves, like, one unit of, like, out of a testosterone or some kind of a hormone, and their one unit is different size than insulin one unit. So these guys overall on insulin because they're using a different syringe with uh, units. They're not using an insulin syringe. Like they're probably using like the ML, like the T. That could be the ML syringe or whatever yeah. syringe they use for testosterone enhancement or whatever else they use. It's thicker. Damn. You know, so that's how people were dying because they overdose. Instead of getting one unit, they're actually given like a hundred because that's how much you're drawing up. Because insulin is very fucking strong. It is very like, strong. Like one it? unit could make somebody hypoglycemic. Yeah, we. A lot of times they get stuck in the needle. That's why we usually give like two, but one or two units can literally, that's all somebody needs. That's how strong this fucking, this hormone is. And you don't know, like I said, your unit ratio and your carb ratio, like mm-hmm. one bodybuilder could be, yeah, a hundred, a hundred carbs and his, you know, he's sensitive to insulin. So two, three, four, six, seven units will get him un- under, he'll be hypoglycemic forever because you know, his he needs two units of insulin for 100 carbs. One bodybuilder might need 8, 10, you know. Like, my unit to carb ratio is per every unit. I have to count six carbs. So, like, there you go. Do the math, you know. 10 units is 60 carbs. So I need pretty much another 8, 7 to get up to 100. Do you, has your doctor given you, like, a recommendation? And then have you noticed your body work differently? So you kind of you kind of know your body a little bit more than the doctor now. Do you, like, give yourself an extra dose sometimes because you know you're going to have X, Y, and Z, or...? So every time I give myself dosage, it's either before eating or drinking something. I never give myself a dose without eating. You know what I mean? So, like, my pump continuously drips insulin to keep me steady, but it's not, like, overloading. It's just, like, just enough to kind of keep me, yeah. yeah. Is that the basal rate or it's the metabolic rate? That's the basal, basal rate. Basal rate. Okay. You got the bolus and the basal. Bolus. It's, it's I, don't, fun. I, I don't know why I thought metabolic. I it's funny because sometimes at the hospital I worked in San Diego, like a patient came in with a insulin pump mm-hmm. and we had like no policy. No one knew what the policy is with the pump or how the pharmacist should scan it. So I was like calling the doctor back and forth and it was just like a whole thing. They what want, mean, like they, they wanted the lady to take it out. I just Be- rip it out. Yeah, I know, but, like, she didn't want it out. So we had to call the doctor. Why can't we keep it in? Because they wanted to just give her, like, sub-Q, you know? I got you. So. Yeah, we had the same issue at one point when I first started. Like, we had a few people come for with insulin pumps. Um, now we just have them stay on insulin pump. Because that's going to that's gonna give their... Because they've been on the pump for a long time, so their body's more accustomed to the pump yeah. than it is right. to us giving us, giving us insulin with meals and, and bedtime, right? So we just have them have the pump on. But if they come with a remodulin pump, we haven't finished a cartridge, and then we put them on a remodulin drip. That's okay. it's, it's for pulmonary hypertension. Very expensive drug. Yeah, I feel like sometimes like patients come into the hospitals with like specific dosages, or they take you know like just say twelve in the morning, twelve at night of Volantis, But now 
we are you're in the hospital, you're gonna get 24 at night, and then we have like these unstable blood sugars because we like mess up a patient's like consistency schedule sometimes. That that's very true, dude. Like there's been so many times where we've transitioned somebody from whatever they were doing at home to what we do at the hospital just be, just for like charting it. Well, I don't know about charting, but just for a hospital convenience to get a protocol. Yep. So it's easier to put somebody on a protocol than have them be on their own protocol because that's different paperwork involved. But then like you said, it throws the blood sugars off. Why? Because they've been on their own protocol for the past like five years and it's accustomed and the body's accustomed to this, that's how their body works. And then we say, hey, we're just getting to get insulin with meals, you know, and at bedtime and really Atlantis at night or in the morning. And it's like, like screw your program. Yeah, the patient's like like, all right, but you know, I've been in hospital before and they couldn't control my sugars last time, so it's gonna happen again. And then, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, but we gotta do this. And they're like, yeah, but they know it's gonna happen. And guess what? Patient's fucking right, like 95% yeah. of the time. P- Peter's. Night, night. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, dude. Like when, like when a patient comes in and has their own structured schedule, I follow their schedule, dude. Even though, like, in, in, a, in a mar, it might be something different. I prefer just to follow their schedule. It's like rescheduling it or canceling it for the night time or yeah. something. Letting somebody you kind of have to, yeah. like, you give them too much insulin and then you're trying to catch up mm. and be like, all right, have an orange juice. Yeah, like, have another one. So have another one, and then your blood sugar is at five hundred, and you're like, shit, yeah. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta figure out this number. Mm-hmm. You're like, what was your number? But by then they're hyperglycemic and hypoglycemic, yeah. all within. 30, 40 minutes, you don't even know if they're A and O, you know, you don't even know if they can remember their name because they're so, their body's just going up and down, just trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, guys, like blood sugar is so important. We take it during a code. Yep. Like we, when we're coding a patient, we take our blood sugar because maybe it's a, tr- it's a troubleshooting. Yeah. You can literally be having some music to the point where you're going to cardiac arrest. And that's why we check blood sugars. Maybe we're pumping this guy's chest and guess we get the glucose up and then he comes out of it. Well, but once they're in cardiac arrest, it's a lot harder to get them out of it. So hopefully you could, Perfect. hopefully, yeah, prevent them from going to cardiac arrest due to hypoglycemic because you should probably monitor your patient a little bit better if they drop to that fucking point. Yeah, not calling a bad nurse. Even for the stroke protocols, man, we check a blood sugar. It's part of the, is it the 15-minute assessment prior to the patient, you know, does A, B, and C. So, yeah, man, sugar is important. And, you know, mad props, they, that's something you have to do part of, as a part of life, you know. Like, we take it for granted you know, hey, that cookie looks good. I'm just going to have it. And we don't even think about the repercussions. We see it in our gut and our belly on the scale, but we don't see a day to day where, hey, I got to give myself more insulin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's a great wrap up, boys. Yeah. All right, Sebastian. Sebastian Matoniak. That's how you say it in Polish. That's how you do say it in Polish. Do you want to share us your Instagram? Maybe people want to follow you, ask uh-huh. you a few questions. I don't know if it's Sebas or Sebastian. No, or- it's just my last name. It's Matoniak. M- M- Matoniak. Matoniak. It's it's how I'm saying it. Matoniak. Matoniak. It's how you spell it. <laughs> well, let me just make sure I know what it is. But yeah, dude, he's future daddy, Sebastian, dude. That's some shit. What's our, up? our our cousin got engaged. You're already married, having a kid on the way. Half of Facebook's getting there's, engaged. I'm tw- you guys are here getting married and getting kids. I'm here getting a bottle removed out of me, dude. Yeah, you're gonna poop sooner, bro. Dude, <laughs> somebody's food just flows through me. And it's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, your bro- your bottle's getting used. Three to cousins that. engaged. Ugh. Who, who's the third one? You got Damien, Natalie. Oh, shit. And Tom. Oh, and Natalie's engaged too, right? Well, she's not, technically she's not my cousin, but uh, not blood, but I mean, we're, we've been close for a long time. But damn, everyone's getting engaged, dude. Who's next? All right. This, Peter. Is, this is for the after Peter. show, boys. Have a good day, guys. Peace, oh, on, peace and yeah. gratitude. Thank oh, it's you. just Matoniak. Okay. At yeah. Matoniak, we're going to link it in the little bio. Yeah. Peace. Peace out, guys. Have a good day.